as you say, you know, it, it, it so much depends on your starting point. If you are coming into this new and you are kind of sheep dipped in the in the model from the start, then it's easy. You know, you, you you're gonna you, you're gonna you you're gonna, that's the way that you're gonna see the world. I'd say the same thing about things like test driven development. If you, you know, if you if you learn to program with test driven development, it's in natural and, and easy. And if you come at it later, it's harder work. Um, so so that makes absolute sense to me so so but like an old old crusty duffer like me who didn't come to it from there um the one of the things that it seems to me is that there there's often assumption in teams that i come across in my consultancy from time to time that it's the starting point for everything and it seems to me that people are building you know um systems that are essentially almost single user simple systems in kubernetes because they think it's because google told them to <laughs> almost and, and i'm do I, I know that i'm doing you a disservice I, I i buy all of the things that you said i think that raising the bar in the way that you said are really important but are, are there any are, are there what's the starting point what's the nature of the project that where kubernetes is going to be you know, a, a win rather than an addition to the complexity of building the system. I do, I, I hear of teams that seem to find it an addition to the complexity of getting started. And I don't know whether that's just because they're full of boring old farts like me or whether it's because of some some other reason. Or well, remember that the key here is use the tools you need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you don't have to use TCP IP. Yeah. Right. You can literally say, I'm going to do this via UDP and handle all of the things that TCP gives you. That's you can totally do that right now. You can totally build an app completely. I've done UDP. that lots of times. <laughs> yeah. And so you don't like TCP. There are some people who say TCP is too complex. It doesn't do a good job. Even yeah. HTTP3 is thinking about sidestepping it. Yeah. Okay. You, you, go, you can do that. No problem. Uh, if you have an app that can get by with a single VM, uh, go ahead. Do that. Yeah. That's like, What's the problem? Like you can totally ignore everything about Kubernetes. Like when I go to Home Depot, yeah, I don't walk down the aisles of the more advanced tools and say, "Oh my God, why does this jackhammer exist? This hammer is all I need to hang pictures in my house." Yeah, yeah. buy the hammer and totally ignore the jackhammer. Now, look, one day someone in the world remembers eight billion people now. Someone needs a jackhammer. Yeah. That person may not be you. It's okay. Like I think a lot of technologists has have this all or nothing thing, them versus Emacs, tab versus spaces. We can't help it. We can't understand why more tools exist in the world than I personally need. And then that creates this angst of like, ah, do I need to learn this tool even though I don't need it? But also the thing we have to understand is we work on teams yeah. at larger companies that tend to have larger concerns than the ones that are in our own field of view. Yeah. And so, for example, if my company says, we have a very simple app, yes, that monolith can run on a single server, yeah. no problem. Then you don't have any issues. Just automate that process and be done with it. Uh-oh, you got to keep the server patched. Uh-oh, if the server were to go down or the zone goes down, I need you to build a tool that can reschedule that app to a different zone. Uh-oh, you also need to update the load balancer. Hey, we also want metrics. And so you're like, man, that's a lot of stuff because this is now, this is what your customer is asking. Forget what Google's yeah. talking about. Your customer assumes that you can have a globally available, I'm not saying every customer, mm -hmm. but I'm saying a lot of people are just now used to this low latency experience from companies big and small. And so that single app on a single VM in a single zone ain't gonna cut it in the competitive landscape. Mm -hmm. So what's your choice? You can definitely build all these things from scratch yourself. Great. But remember how we work as humans. We learn, we learn language from observation. Why do we speak English? I speak English because of where I was born. My parents speak English from where they were born. English is a very complex language. Yeah. Like we got duplicate words that mean the same thing, but not in certain contexts. It's, it's overly complicated, but I use the words I need. So today, if someone gave you the challenge of running a highly available 
application. How would you do it? Would you start where everyone else is with this thing we call Kubernetes? Do you build something from scratch? So I think we got to make sure we look at the trajectory. Kubernetes is like, like 10 years old. Yeah. So lots of people are coming in from running their own Kubernetes cluster from scratch and dealing with all of this complexity. I remember when people started with Linux, they used to build their Linux from scratch. They compile their own kernel, pick their own user land. And there was a big discussion around, should we even be using distros like Red Hat, Ubuntu, and Debian? Because they're so opinionated. They have their fancy package managers. I just want make and make install. Why do I need to get an RPM, right? Like this, but the thing is, the world is a big place. And once we kind of learn good patterns, just like software, yeah. when we learn how to do something, isn't on it for the language designers, the people who maintain standard libraries to try to create a implementation that most people could reuse. So we're not having people recreate all of these things themselves. So that's what I would say to people. Kubernetes is complex. You may not need Kubernetes. This is why I work on Cloud Run. I work on serverless stuff at Google, right? Yeah. And then attempt to replace Kubernetes. Yeah. But the Kubernetes API has been so great for articulating the things you want. I have an app. It needs this much memory, this much CPU. It needs a volume. It needs to run in the zone. It needs the sidecar container because I'm delegating some of my app stack to Apache or Nginx. Okay, we still need to describe that. And maybe it's not Kubernetes that actually runs it. Maybe you give that description to Cloud Run where there is no Kubernetes to be found. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like that way of describing things. I, I, I think, I think that's that fits very nicely with with my own philosophy of software development in terms of, you know, it's you know, I, the way that I try to express it. It seems to to, to me that our job as soft, professional software developers is to solve problems with software, not just to be good at the tools. So the tools are fantastic. It's important to have good tools and using tools that allow us to worry about you know, one part of the problem separated from another part of the problem and make changes in one part of the system without another and raise the bar on the level of abstraction so that we don't have to worry about some of the accidental complexity that's going on around us. It's all vitally important to be able to move quickly and eff efficiently. But fundamentally, the job is to solve the problems. And I, I, I would pull that message out from the way that you talked about that, which I like a lot. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes. So please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>